Thank you, Chairman Bishop, and uh, for this opportunity and Ranking Member Grijalva. I hope your investigation has found me to be an independently minded climate scientist. I am John Christie, a professor of atmospheric science at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. We don't play football at my campus. And Alabama's state climatologist. I have served in many climate capacities, including as a lead author of the United Nations IPCC. My research might best be described as building data sets from scratch to advance our understanding of what the climate is doing and why it does what it does. The main point of my testimony is simple. There is no causal link between the elimination of any single project and changes in the global climate. Thus, no individual product, uh, project should be held up due to climate change concerns. But let me go much, much further. Suppose the United States closed everything and ceased to exist on this day, May 13, 2015. No people, no cars, no industry, no utilities. Climate models tell us the result of this imaginary scenario in 50 years might be a few hundredths of a degree, an amount smaller than the amount by which the global temperature already bounces around from one month to the next. The impact would be so small as to be unattributable to regulations. This result is well known as described in my written testimony. I have presented similar calculations in federal court that went uncontested. But we should back up a bit and address the presumed causal link between CO2 emissions and climate change. You know, we monitor the climate for such variables as temperature. What we do not have is a direct and observable means to tell us why those changes occur. Our thermometers only tell us what has happened. They do not tell us why it happened. To understand why these changes occur, we use climate models whose equations attempt to contain all of the important factors that affect climate. If they are accurate, we can then see how each factor, such as rising greenhouse gases, affects the climate and whether CO2 would be the cause of the changes we see. As shown in my written testimony and up on the uh, chart here, the models fail the simplest of validation tests. They can't even reproduce what has already happened. All 102 model runs warm up the planet more than has actually occurred in the past 36 years. On average, the warming rate of the atmosphere in these models is three times reality. As a consequence, our science has not established the causal link between CO2 emissions and what the climate is actually doing. Therefore, emissions cannot be used as a proxy for climate change. Further, the CEQ guidance gives a list of weather and climate events it claims are increasing due to extra greenhouse gases. But as demonstrated in my written testimony, several of these phenomena have shown no change while CO2 emissions have risen, so there is no proof of a link. This evidence indicates that it has not been established that CO2 emissions have a confident and quantifiable causal link to climate change, whether one is talking about global temperature or about disruptive weather events. Now, it is no secret that the state of Alabama is in a desperate fight with the federal EPA. Our elected officials understand, as do I, their state climatologists, that the regulations being established will do nothing to alter whatever the climate is going to do. We are fighting for our industries, which are being tempted by lower costs in Mexico and China, where their emissions will actually rise. We are fighting for our utilities, which sell over 30 percent of their electricity production to nearby states who need it. And we're fighting for the many poor people in our state who do not need another hike in their utility bills to satisfy a regulation whose only demonstrable impact will be this further drain on their meager resources. This is a time when even so-called green countries like Germany and Japan are adding to their carbon emissions by building more coal-fired power plants, while the rest of the world is moving forward with affordable carbon-based energy. It simply does not seem to me to be scientifically justifiable are economically rational that this nation should establish regulations whose only discernible consequence is an increase in economic pain visited most directly and harshly on the poorest among us. Thank you.